Okay, thank you. To, to this afternoon, we are going to talk about um, climate information services for long-term planning and decision-making, and we'll be focusing on module one. My name is Stephen Mutimba. I'm the Managing Director of Climate and Energy Advisory Service based in Nairobi, and uh, I'm also the director of this course. So module one will deal with understanding climate information and climate services. And in this module, we will define the common terms that put climate information and service into perspective. The climate data is obtained from two sources, from uh, measurement and observation of climate parameters over a prolonged period and provides information on historical events. It's also obtained from climate model outputs, which can simulate past and project future scenario and project future scenario. Climate information is derived from measurable data on temperature, rainfall, wind, humidity, sunshine hours, and other factors. So when we talk about measurable climate parameters taken at the weather stations, we are focusing on the temperature of that particular moment. We focus on barometric pressure. We look at the humidity. We look at the wind speed, wind direction, and precipitation or rainfall amounts. Those are some of the measurable climate uh, parameters. So let, let, let me discuss some of the, def the definition of common terms that uh, is very relevant for this. Uh, for, for this module. First of all, what you need to understand is what is weather. And weather is defined as the day-to-day -day variations in the climate parameter. The day-to-day -day variations, the climate parameter. That is when you say it's hot or it's raining or it's windy, you are referring to weather. But what is climate? Climate now is the average weather conditions taken over a long period of time and not less than 30 years. You know, so it includes seasonal, that is that we have rainfall season, we have dry season ETC, and it also includes interannual extremes and variations locally. You know, in the local context where you live, in the region and across the globe, the, the whole world, yeah. That's what we would call climate. When it comes to climate variability, and this is a very important term, this one refers to the year-to-year -year fluctuation or the variation in mean state of climate on all spatial and temporal scales. By spatial, we mean space, and by temporal, we mean time. So when we talk of climate variability, we are referring, for instance, there are season you have a lot of rainfall, and the season we have less rainfall. The season it's very dry and the season it's not. So that's what we, we mean by climate variability. So climate variability is very important because sometimes it is mistaken as climate change, but there's a difference. When we are talking about climate change, we are referring to a change in the state of climate that persists for a long period Typically, it has to be three decades or 30 years or longer. So climate change may be due to natural and, anthro and anthropogenic processes, that is human processes, but it has to be uh, information that has been, data that has been analyzed for a longer period that shows actually this place, the climate is changing. The temperature has become higher. There's a lot of rain for ETC. So all this information, is contained in what we call the climate system. You know, the climate system. And the climate system is, thus, it is a system that consists of the atmosphere. You know, the atmosphere, that's we are talking about gases, you know. And then we have the hydrosphere, which is consisting of water. And then we have the lithosphere, which is solid rock or part of the earth and then the biosphere, which is the living. Biosphere now we are referring to the living things, 
We are referring to wild wildlife. We are referring to animals, referring to plants. We are referring to insects, reptiles, etc. And this now determines the Earth's climate. So it's very important to understand the climate system because when we talk about climate change, we, we mean that we are affecting the climate system by emitting a lot of gases that actually changes the Earth's climate. So in this picture, we just show uh, weather, which is a, like a daily forecast. Like you can know Sunday, it's going to be sunny, it's going to rain or to be sunny, Monday, Tuesday, where? Say Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. So when we're talking about weather, it can only be focused over a short period, let's say up to seven to 10 days in advance. You know, you can say the weather in the next few days is going to be, there's going to be rain or it's going to, um, to, be, to be dry. But when we are talking about climate, we always, when we're talking about climate, we mean, temperature and rainfall, which has been taken over a long period of, of, of time, which is, as I said earlier, is more than 30 years. So this is just a picture which shows the difference between weather and climate. You know, so when you're watching TV, your television and the announcer or the broadcaster says, and now here is the weather report. Um, you know, due to climate change, we cannot predict the weather is local and, tem and temporary. It happens at a particular time and place. And um, for instance, when you're talking about rainfall, we actually, uh, wind, snow, cyclones, that is, uh, these are all weather events. But as I said earlier, climate is the bigger picture, normally taken as the average temperature, rainfall, wind, and other parameters over a longer time period, and sometimes over a large region. So that picture is just showing the, climate, the components of the climate system, which as I said earlier, it's made up of the atmosphere. It made, it's made up of the ocean, which is part of the hydrosphere. It's made up of land, which is part of the rock, and it's made up of ice. ice. This one now is a more compli complicated component of the climate system, and it shows agents of climate change. You know, so when humans are, are intervening on the ground, when human beings start uh, agriculture practices, when they build roads, when they build dams, when they build uh, houses, you know, all this has an effect on the climate system because one of the things that it does, and especially when you're using petroleum, it produces um, greenhouse gases, which are mostly nitrogen, um, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and this, when they go into the atmosphere and they prevent, you know, they allow the sun uh, rays to come in, but they prevent the sun ray to go back. So what happens is that we get what we, got, we call greenhouse gases, because these gases accumulate in such a way that they trap the heat and they cause now what we are calling a global warming. So this map, this uh, this uh, illustration is just showing what happens is that the, there's the sun, it emits the rays of the sun, they come into the sea, that is the hydrosphere, they come into the land, they, we have the clouds, and you know there's all these things that the human being is doing, and when the human being is doing all the interventions in order to have a good life, there's the consequences, and the consequences are greenhouse gases. These greenhouse gases are the most important as far as climate change is concerned. And when you're talking about climate information, you'll find that, you know, climate information uh, now is the one that really proves that whether these uh, greenhouse gases are really affecting 
at climate change or the climate system. So let, let's go now to the definition of climate information. So when we're talking about climate information, we are looking at the climate par parameters which have been measured over a long period in as many locations as possible of your country or a region and are interpreted well so that they can give the climate information of that area. Therefore, we define climate information as the collection and interpretation of weather and climate data that is credible, relevant, and usable in order to try and understand future climate forecasts or projections. You know, so we collect, interpret the weather and climate data. It has to be credible, it has to be relevant, and it has to be usable in order to try and understand future climate forecasts or projections. So normally climate information go together with climate services. So when we are defining climate services, it's always better to say climate innovation information services, which is the provision of climate information. That is, we are providing the climate in information in a way that assists decision making by individuals and organizations. So climate information services are also defined as tools and processes that enable decision makers and user communities to assess and prevent or prepare for potential impact through weather or climate events. So climate information services are those tools and processes that will enable decision makers. And by decision makers, we mean governments uh, or people in authority or at the community level to assess and prevent or prepare for potential impact for weather or climate events. So climate information service is very crucial for a variety of reasons, including that it provides knowledge for understanding the climate. It, it provides knowledge for understanding climate change and its impacts. And it also guides researchers and decision makers in policy and in business to make informed decisions. It can also facilitate climate smart decision that will reduce the impact of climate related disasters, such as floods and drought. It can also facilitate decisions that will improve food security and also the health outcome of a community. It can enhance water resource management, for instance, for an area. So, in most cases, when one of the, uh, there's the global observation system that is used, so we will discuss this later in more detail in, in the next, more, the other modules, but one thing you need to know that there's a global observing system, which has got satellites which monitor the atmospheric condition on the earth from space. Uh, we have radar systems that are used to create maps of rain and snow and measure motion or rain clouds. We have weather ships, which are mainly in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. So these weather ships collect meteorological observations on a number of atmospheric phenomena such as tropical storms and cyclones. And let me, uh, let me just add here that when you talk of meteorological observations, it's the same as climate information. You know, meteorological observations are always climate information. And then we have ocean data boy, which are mini weather stations that draft in the oceans, drift in the oceans and collect weather data from sparse oceans, areas where no other source of valuable data are available. And then we have surface stations. I'm sure you know about um, the, your meteorology stations or weather stations in your country. You know, there are about 11,000 surface stations which collect observation of Earth's meteorological parameters such as pressure, wind, temperature, etc. And data from these stations 
I think this is what we are talking about. This is the WMO stands for Weather uh, World Meteorological Organization, which is um, which is uh, the one that has these global observing systems, and it's just trying to show what we talked about. We have the weather radars, we have the automated stations, we have the ocean boy, we have the weather ship, we have the aircraft, all this equipment that you see here are the ones with, that are used to collect data, especially in the Pacific and Atlantic oceans, because they always have tropical storms that really affect um, uh, mostly the northern, the northern, uh, uh, northern atmosphere. So this one now brings us to the end of module one and module one, we were just focusing, as I, I said earlier, we were mostly focusing on um, definitions of terms. So in this, in, in this uh, module, we are also going to examine you. There are about 20 questions which are going to be examined. And here I've only put 10, although I'll add more so that there are 20. So some of the questions that you'll be required to answer are, explain the meaning of the terms climate and climate system. What is the difference between weather and weather data? And then list the five measurable parameters of weather. Why do we study climate? How is meteorological data or climate information collected? What is the difference between climate and weather? What causes climate change? What is the difference between global warming and climate change? Who are the users of climate information services? Why is climate information services very crucial to decision makers? And what do you understand by the time climate variability? That brings us to the end of module one. As I said, it was supposed to be an introductory module. And the most important thing here is that we get, get to understand the terminologies that we are going to use because as we go to module two, module three and module four, we shall be using the same terminologies, but we shall be, in, it will be getting a little bit more um, difficult in the sense that we are going to introduce many other terminologies, but you need to understand the basic, which is what is in module one. So this was the end of module one. Uh, you can ask any questions, but please send your question to my email address, which is shown below. It's steven.mutimba at eclimateadvisory.com. Thank you very much for your cooperation.